Okay, so we have 6.4 now. We are on the law of sines. So let's take a look here at the law of sines, shall we? The, the law of sines is an easy way to solve any triangle um, without having any right angles in it whatsoever. Um, you just take the sine of the angle and the side across from it and you set it up as a fraction. So sine of alpha divided by A equals sine of beta over B equals uh, sine of gamma over C. And you can just set all three of those equal to each other or just set pairs equal to each other and you just cross multiply to solve. And that is it. So um, solve triangle ABC and then they're giving you parts. So. Here are the parts that are given. Uh, we have our triangle ABC, and we're just going to fill it in. Um, since this right here is A, we'll put 48 degrees there. Since this is C, it's saying that gamma is 57. I put 57 there. And side B is going to be the side in between um, because this is beta, so the opposites of each other. Um, you said equal to each other. That is A, and that would be C. So the parts we need to find are, I need to find this angle, I need to find this side, and this side over here. So there's three parts of this triangle that I need to find. So the first part that's the easiest, basically what this is saying to summarize is, we know the triangles have 180 degrees. So why don't we start with that? Since I have two angles, I can subtract both those from 180 to find what's left over, and that would be beta. So that's why I got 75 degrees for uh, B. So keep that in mind. That's why I have 75 degrees in there now for B instead of uh, beta. Um, because I did 180 minus 48 minus 57, that's uh, 75 degrees. So now, according to our formula, it's sine of alpha over A equals sine of beta over B, which equals sine of gamma over C. So now that I have that set up, now I can cross multiply these to solve and the reason I can cross multiply is this side has two answers to it so I can just you know cross multiply because there's only one letter available so this, I'm gonna solve for A first so when I do this I cross multiply I get sine of 48 degrees times 47 equals A times sine of 75 so to get A by itself I divide both sides by sine of 75 degrees and then I'm getting A is approximately 36.16 then I can cross multiply these two, figure out what C is. So when I cross multiply those two, I get sine of 75 times C equals 47 times sine of 57. So I just divide both sides by sine of 75, and I get about 40.81. And that's literally the law of sines. Now that's angle, uh, side angle. That's an example of that one. You stay classy, San Diego. Um, triangle ABC, given that, um, let's have our triangle here, ABC, given that um, alpha is 67 degrees, side A, which would be down here, is 100, um, side C, which, if that's angle C, this is C right here, um, we'd have 125. So, we want to solve this uh, triangle. Um, for its missing parts. Um, so when we're doing this uh, to solve the triangle for its missing parts, um, the problem that we have is when I go and fill this in, this is what I know. I know that I have these two filled in. I have nothing out of the B's, absolutely nothing out of the B's. And I have one thing here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cross multiply the far two because there's only one letter to solve for. If I try to do this one right here, I have two letters and it's not going to help. So I cross multiply the far ones and I get um, sine of 67 times 125 equals 100 times sine of some angle gamma. So to get this by itself, then I have to divide by 100. And when I do that, I end up getting sine of gamma equals 1.15063. Okay, no problem. To find an answer for an angle, that's when you have to do the inverse sine or sine to negative 1. So I do sine to negative 1 of that decimal, and we realize that when you type that in the calculator, you end up getting error domain. 
And the reason why you get error domain is because you can't have sine bigger than 1. So this triangle would not exist, and you're going to run into that sometimes when you do this. So I don't need to solve all the other parts because this is an impossible triangle. So example three, we have A, B, and C. Um, I'm given A is 12.4. I'm given that B, so there's B is 8.7, and I'm given beta is 36.7. So, when we go to fill this in, um, here's all the missing parts I need to solve for. And just like the last one, I have two things for B, uh, but these two things, I'm missing both of them, so I can't solve that one. So let's try this one first for A, because there's only one missing part. So it's sine of alpha times 8.7 equals 12.4 times sine of 36.7. So to get sine of alpha by itself, I divide by 8.7 on both sides to get sine of alpha equals 0.8517875. Now that tells me because it's less than one that I know this, you can solve this. It's not more than one, so I will get an answer. But anyway, um, when we go to do this, um, I do the inverse sine because I'm trying to find alpha. I'm trying to find the angle, and I get that um, alpha is 58.41. And the reason why this is helpful is if this is 58.41, and this is 36.7, I know that a triangle has 180 degrees. So I can take 180 and I can subtract the 58.41 and the 36.7 away from it. So now I know that this angle down in here is the 84.89. So now I know both of these, now I know both these, and the only thing missing left is C. So I can cross multiply these two. Or I could cross multiply the ones in the end, either way I'll get the answer. So we get sine of 36.7 times C equals 8.7 times sine of 84.89. Um, I want to get C by itself, so I divide both sides by sine of 36.7. And we get about 14.5 as our answer for example 3. So, in example 4, when the angle of elevation of the sun is 64 degrees and a telephone pole that is tilted at an angle of 9 degrees directly away from the sun casts a shadow 21 feet on level ground approximately the length of the pole. So, um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to stop this video right there for now. When we come back, we can dive right into uh, this problem.